بالمعروف وات از امر بالمعروف امر بالمعروف از تو انكوريج اذرز وين دي دو جود النهي عن المنكر از تو ديسكوريج اذرز وين دي دو ايفل This is very important. This is one of the responsibility we neglect today, brothers and sisters. That's why I say this is one of the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Today, you and I live in this part of the world. When we see something wrong, what do we say? Immediately we say, none of my business. That is what we say. Somebody is doing something wrong. I say, it's not my business. Islam say, it's all your business. When you see it, you are responsible to correct it if it's wrong. You are responsible of it and to encourage the person if he's doing something right. Your child at home, they wake up for Fajr prayer, encourage them. Give them something. Talk them. Talk to them. Encourage them to keep going. So when you see a child doing something incorrect, try to also discourage them. This is very important, brothers and sisters. Now let me connect you this with the message of Imam Hussein. Now, what did Imam Hussein say? In one of his saying, he said, Inni lam akhruj ashirran wala batran wala mufsidan wala zaliman wa innama kharajtu li talab al-islah fi ummati jaddi uridu an a'mura bil ma'roof wa anha an al-munkar wa asira bisirati jaddi wa abi rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. And brothers, you know, listen careful to the words of Imam. Because the sayings of Imam is the Imam saying of all human beings as well. Now, let's Imam say, Innama kharajtu. Innama in Arabic is called Adatul Hasr. Meaning, the only reason, no more. The reason of my uprising is just this. Litalabil Islah. Reform, a change. One, two. أريد أن أأمر بالمعروف. I want to do أمر بالمعروف. There is messed or left in the society. Brothers and sisters, to share with you about the importance of أمر بالمعروف. Number one, brothers and sisters, go to the Quran. Read سورة الشمس. At the end of the surah, Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, إذ بعث أشقاها. فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فأقروها فدم دم عليهم. Here I just want you to think this ayah, brother. See, the Quran says إذ بعث أشقاها. When one of the evil one among them, what did he do? He went and killed the camel of the Prophet Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Now listen, that's what Allah said. إذ بعث أشقاها. But when the punishment of Allah came to them, listen to what Allah said. فَدَمْ دَمَا عَلَيْهِ أو عَلَيْهِمْ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah said, He went and killed, but we punished them. Now think about it, brothers and sisters. Okay, He killed it. What is the crime of others? Right? The others? What is the crime? They didn't do anything. Allah, you stated that He went and killed. Why doesn't you punish Him and leave the others? The reason is that the others, when they found that he went to kill, they failed to do Amr bil ma'aruf and Nahay anil munkar. And they became equal in the crime. That is Amr bil ma'aruf, brothers and sisters. When I see something wrong and I don't say anything, I am equal in that crime with the person. That's why Allah said, Fadam dama alayhim rabbuhum. And listen careful. بذن به أو بذن بهم بذن بهم الله سبحانه وتعالى because they also consider sinners equally to the same guy and the the reason is why because they fail to do أمر بالمعروف that's number one number two brothers and sisters الله أكبر you read in دعاء كمال please pay attention careful every Thursday night we read دعاء كمال one part you said you ask Imam Imam Hussein Imam Ali is asking اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء. تحبس الدعاء means what? It blocks my dua from being accepted. You make dua here and Allah doesn't accept. Now check and see what is the sin that we commit and Allah doesn't accept our dua. Imam Hussein explained in one of the hadith. He said, لا تترك الأمر بالمعروف. Do not stop Amr bil Maruf under any circumstances. If we stop, what will happen? Two things. 
فيولى عليكم شراركم the evil ones among you will take the lead that's number one number two ثم يدعو خياركم فلا يستجاب لهم then the mu'minin they make dua Allah will not pay attention to them why not because they did Quran. No, because there are some people in the society, they're doing wrong and nobody ever speak about them. Nobody ever stop or encourage somebody who is doing the right thing. That is the importance of Amr bil Maruf. Moreover, in the hadith, after Musa alayhi salam, there was people who used to live in a small town. They all were the sinners. They were doing committing sins. There was only one person, Alim. He decided to take one part of his room, just praying and doing his ibadah. He has passed by. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became angry with them. He wanted to punish them. Allah sent Jabrail, Ya Jabrail, go and destroy that village. Jabrail came and he met the man who was in the state of sajda, doing ibadah. Jabrail went back to say, Ya Rabb. In him Rajulan Sajid. I saw a man who's Sajid, prostrating, doing ibadah. And I know it's not your custom to punish people when they are a good people among them. The custom of Allah, whenever He wants to punish people and there is a good one among them, He tells the good one to leave. Like He told you, Lut alayhi salam, Lut, leave before I punish them. So Allah saw one good man in them. Now listen carefully what the hadith says. Allah told Jabrail, Ya Jabrail, bihi tabda. The punishment starts from him. It's Abid Zahid, Ya Allah. Jabrail asked Allah, and Allah said, Ya Jabrail, what good his ibadah does to me when I am being disobeyed and he doesn't show any concern? I'm being disobeyed. He sees and he doesn't show any concern. Allah said, oh, what good does he do? I want a servant who is concerned when he see Allah being disobeyed and he is happy when he see Allah is obeyed. He said, that is the servant that I want. But the important part of Amr bil Maruf is how do you do it? It's very important, brothers and sisters. Because Amr bil Maruf is wajib upon every one of us because that's what the ayah says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ But how do I start the Amr bil Maruf? Number one, brothers and sisters, you have to make sure that when you are to do Amr bil Maruf, you have to be very careful how you do it. Because sometimes you might be doing good, something good you want to deliver. If you mess up, you make it even worse. You have to be very careful. How do I do it? He Islam said that when you want to do Amr bil Maruf, the first thing is you have to do it in, in private. I see a brother, a sister. She doesn't wear hijab, which is one of the important messages, brothers and sisters. A sister who comes to the masjid, a sister who is a Muslim, have to make sure that they're concerned about their look. Because a sister, she has a role model, and that role model is whom? is four in the wall. One is Khadija alayhi salam. Second, Fatima al-Zahra. Third is Maryam. Fourth is Asiya bintu Muzahim. These are the role models of Muslim sisters in the world. And they used to take care of their hijab. When they come to the masjid, when they come to center, they come very well dressed. And that gives you the dignity as a Muslim. Now, if I see a sister or a brother or somebody is not practicing Muslim or Islam the way they should, he Islam say, first consult them in private. And Imam Ali said, Najil Balaga, he said, Man wa'adha akhahu fi sirri faqad qaranahu wa man wa'adhahu fi alani faqad shana. If you advise your brother in private, you made him a friend. If you advise him in public, you made him your enemy. Don't go into the public and say, Ya Allah, brother, you're doing this haram. You're going to hellfire, Jahannam. No way out. No, brother. Allah tells us in the Quran, when he was sending Musa 
and Harun to Fir'aun. Fir'aun is the worst person you can ever imagine. Allah mentioned, Allah told them, He said, ila faqula lahu Allahu Akbar. Ya Allah, you are sending it to Fir'aun. He's a tyrant. But Allah said, tell him, use the softest word to him. In tafsir, Musa asked Allah, Allah, what do you mean, kawla layinan? Allah says, kanihi bi ismi alladhi yuhibbu. Don't go there and call him Fir'aun. No, 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 don't call him that. Allah said, call him with the name that he loved the most. Musa asked, ya Rabb, wa ma huwa kunyatu? What is the name that he loved the most? He said, inna Fir'aun yuhibbu an yusamma bi abi mis'ab, fasammihi bi abi mis'ab. So call him with the beautiful name that he loved. Why, Ya Allah, why shouldn't I call him Fir'aun? Why should I use a harsh word? The next I explain, I say, لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرْ أَوْ يَخْشَى Soft words, it sits in the heart. If it comes nicely. Let me give you an example, brothers and sisters. If somebody comes to give you a gift, they have a gold, they wrap it, a gold, they wrap it in the paper. They're coming to you to give you for your birthday. But they came and they say, Salaamu Alaikum on your face. Huh? This is your gift. It's a gold. It's a gift. But how would you react, brother? It's a gold, something valuable. It's a given to you. But the way he gave you, you will not appreciate it. You can give the gold back and you care less about that gold. Right? That's gold. Now, if the same person comes, with the stone, he pick it on the floor. Stone, he wash it. Looks nice. I said, brother, I don't have anything to give you, but this is all I have. Please just take it, and then I hope you like it. It's a stone. It doesn't cost an anything. But if the way he present to you, you will be more acceptable and appreciative because not of what he gave you, the method that he used to give you. That is the message of Islam. When you are to present Islam or correct someone, the method is very important. That's why Quran says, "Udu ila sabili rabbik bil hikmati wal mawaidat al hasana." When you call others to Allah, Allah says, "Use wisdom." And the best example is Imam Hassan and Hussein. When they saw that man who didn't know how to make wudu, it's Imam Hussein and Hassan. They can say, to, "You old man, you don't know how to make wudu. Shame on you." They can say that, right? They can say, "How old are you and still you don't know how to make wudu?" Look, look, look. We are this young and we know. But he didn't do that, right? They find the best method and they taught the man where he learned from them and was also appreciative to them. That is the method. It's very important, brothers and sisters. So when we all want to do Amr bil Maruf, we have to be very careful how we present it because that makes a big difference in giving or delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to others.